The Kogars Gateway in Kazakhstan is one of the most ambitious projects under China's Belt and Road Initiative. It aims to transform world trade by facilitating the shipments of goods from China to Europe by train, which takes less than half the time needed when it's done by sea. Even though the train routes here do have to overcome technical issues, such as the different gadgets that are used in Central Asia and China. Now, once the trains carrying goods from China arrive at this Corgus Gateway, they have to be unloaded like those and reloaded back onto other cars because the train gauge is different from Kazakhstan and China. Regardless, the new Silk Road vision is taking shape and has helped create jobs for people in the area. But growth has been slow, especially in recent years, with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and a war in Europe. Ну, в связи с известными событиями на Украине, конечно, объем грузоперевозок в Европу упал где-то наполовину. Но у нас, как вы знаете, есть альтернативный маршрут. ТМТМ называется через Каспийское море, Азербайджан, Грузию. Mr. Alma said they are also aware of the criticisms against the Belt and Road Initiative and worries of loading countries with heavy debt. Сейчас мир, глобальный мир, он же развивается. Китай как производитель, мы как транзитер, конечный потребитель в Европе, в России, они как бы, как вам сказать, в общем, взаимовыгодное это сотрудничество идет здесь. Нельзя сказать, что один много зарабатывает, другой не зарабатывает, кто-то с кем-то пользуется. Все, все тут заинтересованы. For people in Central Asia, even if they may not fully grasp the scale of the BRI projects and the controversies behind them, some say they welcome the deeper economic connection with China. Yeah, of course, because the, the, we still have a lot of things uh, which uh, we bring from China. Uh, because they have a quite not uh, bad quality and also not very expensive. So this could be a beginning also. The in neighboring Uzbekistan, which has also seen a steady increase in Chinese investments coming to the country, people generally have a more welcoming attitude toward Chinese capital than other Central Asian countries. According to several Chinese reports, over 1,800 Chinese enterprises operated in Uzbekistan in 2021, and that increased to more than 2,000 the year later. After 20, 10 years of this project, uh, my um, um, understanding of the BRI uh, has both, uh, um, you know, skeptical uh, and optimistic uh, expectations. Of course, uh, st I'm still convinced that it's not without geopolitics. It does have a geopolitical dimension, but at the same time, we already know that China, uh, or with uh, assistance of China, with the support of China, uh, Central Asian countries were uh, already uh, engaged in a number of projects which are so useful, so promising for us, for the region. He cited the construction of a 19.2-kilometer tunnel, the Kamche, which connected people in the densely populated Vergana Valley region of Uzbekistan to the rest of the country. With the help of China, the construction was completed in 2016, and the tunnel, which is the longest in Central Asia, allowed people to travel from Fergana to the capital city of Tashkent in about three hours. Before that, it took more than double that time and was a long and difficult trip having to travel mountains in this double landlocked country. Like the ancient Silk Road more than 1,000 years ago, the Belt and Road Initiative is more than just about carrying goods and precious commodities. The project has also brought about greater people and cultural exchanges. And countries like Uzbekistan are hoping that will help attract more Chinese visitors to its country. Lim Yansuk, CNA, Central Asia.